FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. They're not from around here, spending millions to attack and attack. But what they're doing to Claire McCaskill is nothing compared to what their special interest agenda will do to you. They want to end Medicare as we know it. Claire fights to protect it. They want more tax breaks for multimillionaires and oil companies. Claire cuts taxes for the middle class. They back unfair trade deals for China. Claire says, make it in Missouri. I'm Claire McCaskill, and I approve this message. Did they really have to say Missouri? Because nobody, they that. nobody says that except, like, great-grandparents and my yes. grandparents. Nobody says Missouri. And I'm from southern Missouri. My family lives in southern Missouri. They even say Missouri. But I, I found that, that whole ad about Claire McCaskill quite interesting. She's against subsidies for oil companies. Totally okay with them for green energy, like Solyndra. Uh, b- very, very big difference there. I think that this is, and I say this over and over again because I can't emphasize it enough, that this is the most vulnerable Claire McCaskill has ever been. And if we are ever going to be able to reclaim the seat, it's this particular election. And we have a varied Republican primary. One of those candidates, John Bruner, is on the phone with us right now. He is in the Republican primary hoping to challenge Claire McCaskill in the general election this fall. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Dan. Good to be with you and your listeners today. Well, thanks for joining us. I, I have to get your opinion on what you think about this uh, this article from STL Today. And frankly, I was kind of surprised that the Post-Dispatch would run it because I don't necessarily classify them as an even centrist publication. But they ran an article discussing all of the outside donations that Claire McCaskill has been getting in hand over fist. And yet at the same time, she comes out with ads trying to lambast other candidates if they even get a dollar in from an outside group. What do you make of this this latest situation with uh, Claire McCaskill? Well, this is the real problem. Uh, too much politics. Politics is normal. Bring home the bacon. Bring home the money from wherever you can get it. Uh, just a few months ago, she was up in Chicago with President Obama getting money and then down with that fight promoter down in Miami. And she's got the money coming in from Hollywood. And yet she's trying to present herself as a, a middle-of-the-road Missourian, uh, which we all know is not her voting record. And that's why I got involved here. I got tired of the politicians. I've been in manufacturing for 33 years. I served in the Marine Corps before then, and just as a citizen senator would like to get in there and and suggest that she get home and let's get some real authentic people in there to help our country and get it back into shape. Yeah, absolutely, because it's definitely going to come down to uh, when we when we when we get this a new administration, which hopefully I, I think, especially if the election were held tomorrow, that would definitely happen because this this president doesn't have coattails either, not for himself or anyone else. But it's going to come down to repealing and and revoking all of the regulations and all of these pr- proposals that like Dodd Frank, so on and so forth, that this administration has pushed forward that's absolutely killing jobs. And if 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 you get the nomination and you go and you go on to challenge Claire McCaskill, what are some of the things that you're going to be focusing most strenuously on? Well, first of all, and uh, this is the big issue today, I'm here in Jefferson City in the Capitol meeting with folks. There's thousands and thousands of people have come here. I especially like seeing all these young folks here engaged, but number one is uh, the Obamacare program. I like to call it the Obamaclare program. And we've got to <laughs> repeal Obamaclare. That's number one, because that's $1.7 trillion. But, you know, I've been across the state dozens and dozens of times already, and I'm finding the same thing I saw 33 years on the factory floor in manufacturing. These regulations, Dana, you're exactly right. You pull back these in, uh, nonsense regulations that are choking, choking people, they're threatening people, and Americans will get back to work. Just get big government to back off, and we can get America working right away. Yes, and, that, and definitely, but this administration doesn't see it. You have Claire McCaskill, whose ads she discusses and rails against uh, you know, what she calls big oil and natural gas and so on and so forth, which we know is in lockstep with this president. She won't campaign with him, but she is completely of hive mind with him on every single issue, uh, which I don't know how she's going to reconcile her uh, helping support his Obamacare, especially after the Prop C vote, and everyone, even Democrats, completely repudiated that across the state. But she, she lambasts... Uh, uh, big oil, but at the same time is supportive of the of subsidies for green industry that is more expensive, not as efficient. And you have all of these these I think it's like what thirteen companies now that have gone bankrupt with billions of taxpayer dollars like Solyndra and Light Squared. I it is such a hypocrisy, but yet she gets a uh, gets away with it and and doesn't see she doesn't see how contradictory this is. Well, and I think this is an opportunity for the citizens of Missouri to see a very, very clear choice this time. I've never run for public office. I've spent all my time on the factory floor working hard, creating jobs, 
and selling our products all across the United States. And you're exactly right. You talk about big oil. When she came on board here, she, gas prices were dollar seventy nine. Now, where is she leaving us, and what is she doing? This is absolutely insane. And yet she tries to position herself because it's a, an election year. It's kind of like the, the middle of the road, and yet I'm keeping the, the, the stata, uh, stats and data right here. She's been voting with President Obama 94% of the time. You know, that's why I call it the Obama Claire program. These two are, are joined at the hip, and it's time that both of these folks be voted out of office so we can get our country back working again. Well, and when you look forward to not just to towards your race, but one of the one thing that's going to be very important for if you, if you if you become the the nominee and you go forward to challenge Claire McCaskill in the general, uh, one of the things that will be helping you and a lot of other candidates is who the Republican nominee is and the length of you know I mentioned President Obama's coattails, the length of the Republican nominee's coattails as well, because this is a very interesting election and I think it's even uh, it, it, we think always think every election is the most important, but really this one more so than the last one simply because we have to be able to repeal Obamacare. Uh, when you look forward to to some of these candidates, and I, I might be putting you in a tough spot, but I have to ask, is there any of the particular Republican presidential candidates that seem to fit your your beliefs and your platform more so than the others? Well, I think the, the most important thing here, and you look at those that are, the, say, the top three right now, all three of these folks are good, solid conservatives. They're all heading in the right direction. The, the difference between any of these three and President Obama is the difference between night and day. And the same thing, you know, in terms of the presidency, we have to get back to U.S. Senate. And, and if we don't uh, get back to Senate, if we don't get back to presidency, I mean, this country is heading down the tubes so fast and so quick. And, Dana, you're exactly right. Those who have not been involved in politics, those who have said, well, I've been too busy to vote, those who have been uh, uh, having other priorities need to get engaged this time. We get more citizens involved, we're going to get this country back, and we have a chance to do it, and if not, we're in trouble. Yeah, definitely. And of course, your your other opponents going into this primary. This is uh, it's been an it's been an interesting race, and I think I think all of the candidates, you know, yourself and and Steelman and Aiken, you know, good candidates. And I love that we have the choice of uh, of of candidates that we have. I think it's the 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 selection of candidates in Missouri Senate race, from my perspective, is a lot better than the the selection of candidates in the Republican primary. But from your perspective, what makes you a more appealing candidate than your opponents in the Senate primary. Well, I, I know these folks here, and, and when the broad sense, we're all heading toward the same goal line and goals and, direct, and, and direction. But the really key fundamental here is that I have been in the, the private uh, workplace. I have been creating jobs, a, a company that's been around for over 100 years. We've, we've been as a family through World War I, II, the Great Depression, ups and downs. We've actually done it where the other candidates have talked about it, read about it, observed about it. Uh, and we are in such tough times. I'm afraid that the times of the career politicians need to step aside and get people who have real-world experience up there to get the job done, not only to run a great campaign and, and beat Claire McCaskill because she has yet to spend her 15 to $20 million. So this is going to be a tough race. But once you're there, you need people with skills, real-world skills, who have actually done it. Uh, and I want to join the, the likes of people like Ron Johnson. He spent 31 years in manufacturing. He's done a great job. We have to have more citizen senators up there, and that's where the mm -hmm. big difference between myself and our primary opponents yeah, that's a that's an excellent point too. Last uh, last quick question for you, and I, I I always like to find this out about any candidate. If you if you were in office when when TARP had gone through, and I remember that was a very you know hotly contested time. Uh, how would you have stood on on the the issue of TARP? How would you have voted? Well, of course, you, you vote against these issues every time the government gets involved and gets engaged whether they're picking winners or losers or in, in, in going into alternative energy like Solyndra and, and algae and all these different issues, they're kicking the can down the road. They're increasing the national debt. Our spending is out of control. You know, I've balanced budgets for over 33 years. I've actually done this, and budgets are a matter of setting priorities. You just cannot throw stimulus packages out there, and now we're going to have a worse problem because of what they've done. We have to have common sense, practical, real-world business skills up in D.C. right now, and I'm going to do everything I can getting around the state of Missouri to tell the voters there's a chance for a citizen center this year. There's a real, real 
opportunity and a real choice. I like that phrase, citizen senator, because that's exactly when the founding fathers were, were, were figuring out how representation was going to be delegated and who was going to do it. It was never supposed to be an industry. It was always supposed to be people paying their dues to society. And, and uh, I mean, even the farming schedule was even set up to reflect that. So it's, it's good to hear people that remember that that's how it was intended to be. John Bruner, who is candidate for U.S. Senate. John, what's your website really quickly? It's uh, johnbruner.com. And you're right. I've been a citizen uh, soldier in the Marines. I want to be a citizen uh, senator going forward. JohnBruner.com. We're looking for other citizens to get engaged and, and take this election to Washington, D.C. and get our country back and get it working again. Well, thank you for your service, and thanks for throwing your hat in the ring as well. Well, thank you for your time, and right. have a great afternoon. Thank you. You too. Take care.